Um, okay, today in the adventures of working on Jamie's AT man, that's Jamie. Say hi, world. Uh, and that's Seth. Say hi, world. Hi, world. And that's Paul. Paul's like dressed like black and a ninja. He snuck up behind Jamie. Jamie didn't even see it coming, did you? Nope. Nope. Now he's the Unabomber. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> no, we're okay. Here's the thing. When you're that driving down died. a do what? That guy finally died like this year. <laughs> he did. Shinsky? You know, how do they know it was him? He didn't look anything like the sketch drawing. And it's like, so somebody's like, I seen somebody that looked like a surfer. And then they found this. I think it was just a hermit that got blamed because they had to blame somebody. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, but you sometimes, okay, when you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you, your your hair gets caught in your headliner, then you go somewhere and they're like, a headliner's going to cost you X number of dollars. And you're thinking, I didn't even pay that much for my whatever you're driving. But today we want to show you how to do a headliner. This is the headliner out of Jamie's 18 van. Uh, now, we're kind of fortunate. Uh, this is why it pays to ask questions. Like, I was at church one day, and before I even got there, they done this big program where they bought this roll of stuff. And then they were cleaning out the garage, and they were going to throw that big roll of stuff away. And I was like, I, I work on cars. i seen the purpose for that big roll of stuff. I didn't know what it was, but now we've made panels and door panels and stuff for Jamie's van. They look pretty good, don't they? Oh, yeah, and what is funny, because of the color, Jamie actually got buttons, like them fancy upholstery buttons that match the color perfectly. So it, it turned out pretty good. But anyway, so today we're going to show you how to do your own headliner. First thing you need is you need a headliner. Uh, pick your material. Uh, you can go online. You can order headliner material. Now, headliner material comes a lot of times with a uh, with a padding under it. This doesn't have the padding under it, but it still works fine. And all that that means is that if there's ever a hole in it in the future, <coughs> there won't be any of that stuff that you can roll off with your thumb that'll just constantly be falling. Apart. Yeah. Well, that's the problem though. The padding turns into black boogers that fall off in your yeah. air and lets the headliner let go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I've made some really cool-looking headliners out of fabric like zebra print and leopard print and stuff. This is just straight up gluing it to... Yeah. It. So the, what you're going to need, you're going to need a... Where's the glue? While Jamie's getting the glue, first of all, you need your headliner board. You need the material. Pick a color. It's your choice. Uh, like I said, I got this. But you can get this kind of stuff anywhere. A lot of your bigger Walmarts have a really good lineup of stuff uh and then what you're going to need is a, a, a rag and then a some paint thinner because you want to get all the dirt residue stuff off of that and uh and this is what we recommend if you're at at home or doing it is the 3m super 77 uh heavy duty stuff uh 3M, man. Okay, there's things you can get bargain-wise. You can save money on a lot of things. But anything that's going to have to stay forever, we recommend going ahead and paying the money and getting 3M. This is not a sponsored video. It's just one of those that's a corner you don't need to cut. Right. You know what I'm saying? It works. Well, uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do, guys. Uh, so Paul? Yeah. Take the camera for a second. I want you to video Seth taking a thinner rag, showing how to clean this right quick. Ooh. We gotta get a thinner Do a rag. flip. Yeah, there's your rag. Excuse me just for a second. All right. Okay. Yeah, there you go. you clean this off. It's about the same as cleaning anything off, except you get a rag with this stuff on it that hurts. It finds the cuts. Yeah, it finds every cut on your hand. Mm -hmm. And if you ha aren't used to using it, then it's just going to straight up hurt you to touch it. Like your first few times using it. And even and it uh, really sucks to use in the cold because it's like evaporating constantly. So it makes your hands really cold, which really sucks during the winter. And what sucks even more about it during the winter is that you can't wear gloves because then your gloves get soaked in this thinner that hurts. You know? Yeah, but it's not as bad when you get used to it and everything. Yeah. 
But then you can only really get it on your palm of your hands anyways. I don't know, the first time I touched this stuff, I was 14, and I was like, ah, you guys probably didn't see it, Jamie was just busting it down off camera. Oh man, Jamie, I missed it. Hold on a second, I'm gonna... There we go. I don't know if it's just me, or all these small dots and stuff that are really, really screwing with me. <laughs> all these small dots and stuff, and it's like when you're at a different angle, they look different colors because of the white backdrop around all of them. It's no, I get the same thing. I think we've got broken pattern recognition software. I didn't have... <laughs> what, what, what is it? I don't, I don't want to talk about what happened. Oh. Oh, shoot. Oh, wow. It works. Oh. He just sprayed himself in the eye. <laughs> and now the world knows. Now the world knows, Seth. <laughs> no, no, I did. The cat, I thought the cap was broke off, but actually it was just missing. Oh no. I was trying to pull the cap out. So, uh, I will. Be careful. Be careful, yeah. I don't know. I've sprayed myself in the eye with stuff before, so. have to look over it. It's just one of those, if you're not paying attention, it'll get you. Even if you are paying attention. You look good, sir. Okay, well, I got that clean. Uh, that's how you clean something off with a thinner rag. So you take a thinner rag and you clean it off. Take a thinner rag and clean it off. Yep. So now that this is clean with a thinner rag, we're going to leave it alone a minute for everything to evaporate off of it. And then okay. once everything's evaporated off of it, we're going to be able to spray the glue on without the residue. Oh, without focus. The thinner residue, like the residual thinner, just cleaning it again and peeling off of all of the M3. And it's important to wear safety glasses. <laughs> yeah. I usually do. This time I didn't. So uh, I just unglued my eye. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. Yeah, it would be careful and use safety glasses whenever you're pointing stuff at your face. <laughs> yeah. Like the other day, I was uh, taking rust off the top of this thing with a. What is it? A wire wheel? All oh, right, it's just getting dry. Yep. Okay, now the first thing you want to do is this is a contact thing. So while this is clean, this is why it's important to have multiple surfaces because uh, the first thing you want to do is is put this in place. All right. Let's put it in place. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's flip it over. Okay. And what does that do? Well, this first thing you want to do is you want to. Uh, oh, let me. Get you to want to spray this this side, right? Right. Then after we spray this side. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pick this up and lay it here. You spray that. But what happens is you want the glue to permeate the, the fabric in this. Then you want the glue to permeate the, the, the board. So then you stick those two pieces of glue together. If you just glue one object and then put it together, there's a less chance of you getting a good adhesion. All right. That's why we use Bulldog as engine promoter. Yep. Well, on no, paints. No. Mm. <coughs> uh -huh. So here we go. Watch where you point that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Way too soon. I can't believe you would take such a pot shot at my dad. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> Yeah, the other day I was taking rust off the top of that Roadrunner with that grinding wheel with wire brush on it. It's a good thing I wore glasses because I kept getting hit in the face with those briars. Bristles. Bristles, Bristles. yeah.
bristles kept coming you off see, that. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. It's, it's still got in a fan pattern. It's hard just... to see it from here. Try getting like a lower angle. Um, you can tell what part you're sprayed because it looks kind of like there's a bit of silly string on it. Just yeah. white silly string. Yeah, it's I don't know if it'll pick it up. On, uh, Let me use that shit. Uh, parts of the... It's easier to tell when you're using darker colored, you know, headliner material. Sometimes they have a black bottom or just the color is so black that it oh, I think kinda caught that. goes yeah, through. Right there. But this stuff sprays out as like a cloudy white silly string. Yeah. The Pretty much. The stuff comes out like, okay, yeah, pick that end up. Yellow. Just carefully just sit it right there. Okay. Just don't let it stick to itself. Yeah, because if it sticks to itself, then you're screwed. Stuck. Yeah, then you've just wasted that piece of material. Yeah. You see on here, it's much easier to tell because it looks kind of like spraying clear coat on paint. Exactly, yeah. It becomes shiny. shinier. Man, I accidentally found out that Silly String was flammable once. Not anymore. When did they stop making it flammable? When that kid cooked that other kid at that birthday party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. It still smells like alcohol. Yeah, it I still got smells so much trouble over for laughing at that. My mom and dad like, what kind of, what's, that's not funny. And I'm, I know, ah. Here you go, go ahead and do this side right here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it kind of reminds me. The other day we went to a wedding. Watch yourself. And like, here's the thing. I usually, oh, I'm usually, Stand that up. I'm usually not the type of person to laugh at kids falling, but it's like, you can tell. <laughs> Keep standing up. I'm sorry. Oh, hold on. There we go. Come on, but, avoid it. Come on, avoid it. Come on, avoid it. But it's like, have you ever seen a kid start running and immediately know they were going to fall? And then they do 10 seconds later. And you were right. I keep looking at what you're doing in real life instead of through the camera lens. You know, that's the funny thing, though. You see some somebody going, that child's going to fall. And you're they're like, yeah. Yeah, I know. Can't wait. Leave him alone. <laughs> No. But no, it's like we were at this wedding and they were getting ready for the wedding. Like they weren't saying vows or anything yet, but this kid starts running to their mom and it's like this three or four year old kid. And as soon as it starts running, it's going down a downhill slope and you can Im immediately tell. But this kid is, is not going to stop running until it falls over. But a lot of that is because you realize you've been there before. Because you remember being a kid running downhill, and all of a sudden you get way ahead of your feet. Exactly. You know, you know what's going on? <laughs> and, then, right. and it's like, you know. The thing is, I saw it. I, I saw it. And I almost didn't laugh. But then I, I turned around. No, I was standing. Paul was in front of me. We were all facing the direction the kid was running from. We all watched the kid fall. And I didn't laugh. And then, I kid you not, Paul turns around at me like this. <laughs> <laughs> I had and then I started <laughs> laughing at Paul's face. He was like... I was trying so hard not to laugh, dude. Man, I really am the mean old man that laughs at kids. Yep. Oh, I'm such a jerk. The funnest thing about that, though, is when you don't laugh and you get somebody else to laugh... And then everybody looks at your friend like, you're a monster. Amazing. I remember one time we were in church singing mm -hmm. Standing on the Promises. We were like, standing, standing. Well, my buddy's middle name was Stanley. <laughs> so we're sitting <laughs> next to each other and I went, Stanley. Like that. And I kept saying, and he goes like, blah. <laughs> and, and I just keep on, on the promises of God and I say, you're like, well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Stanley. <laughs> All right. Remember, there are two types of villains villains that go to church and villains that don't go to church. That's just that's, that's, that's exact. That's uh, pretty much the big and large of it. Oh, two sets of villains. Right, two right, sides right, of the right. coin. 
the Costco employees that won't let me take all of their stuff for two dollars. Well, apparently, all you gotta do now is get a bunch of your friends and go in together. And I seen the deal. Like, did you see that deal with the flash mobs where they went in that Nike store and stole them shoes? Oh, I've seen a bunch of those. And then the next day, though, you get this bunch of people outside. We're going to put a stop to that in our community. Yeah, we don't need no cops down here. No, we got this. I'm like, that's who did it. <laughs> that's why they don't want no police around. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. So that's a really oh, wow. funny video about these people in Baltimore or something. Just did that to an Apple store, you know? All right. Jamie, you want to grab uh, this side and I'll grab this side. Little did they know. All right, we need to stand. You cannot steal Apple devices anymore. <laughs> no, they have too many security. Pull, pull it your way. Pull it your way. No, no, don't set it. Don't let it touch. Okay, pull it up. Put it in there. Pull it up there. Timmy, you win any level? We go down like this. Okay, are you lined up with your edge, or you need to go over there? Yeah, I'm good. You touch? You, are you over your edge? Yeah. Okay. There. Okay. Oh, we got it too far. It was too far. Okay, there. Okay. There. It's kind of close to you, like. Well, it goes. It's got a molding that goes under that. Oh, you know it. it yeah. Oh. Yeah. You got to get all the wrinkles. Hey, let me come around to the other side. We're in on so. Sorry, guys. I'm having to go around. Well, we're not supposed to. Seth, Seth is supposed to start in the middle. Okay, work his way out. Yeah, don't don't press that down, Jamie. That's got to lift up. Okay, pull this corner up in there. Okay. Here, do you want me to? I'll just. Just keep filming. Okay. I remember the first time me and Seth ever did this. It was for his truck. That was pretty cool. That's about to dry. I'm going to come. Ooh, there we go. Are oh, you trying to place? Yep. Nice. All right. There you go. Yeah, the reason you got to start at the middle is to make sure you can sort of flex all of the wrinkles out so that there's yep. no wrinkles on it. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. That is a work of art. What do you think, Jamie? That looks good. You know Straight from the Mr. Man's mouth. He thinks it looks good, everybody. Straight out of my mouth. Yeah. Because there's one person you got to please. The owner. The customer. Exactly. <laughs> man, I almost said something. Then I realized, man, I shouldn't say that. So, so I didn't. didn't. And, he told and now the world will never know what it is. Right. You know what you did say a while ago? What's that? Dad spray yourself in the face. <laughs> that was not me. That was not me. I am no snitch, dude. Do you know how many secrets I have not told people? I'm not telling you because that's a secret too. Yeah, Ooh. Those bumps out there. Where those holes are at. Yeah, them are. Those made to be visible. Those, yeah. You have some hanging radar detector there or something. Or? They done something. Yeah. yeah. Two holes. There's two holes. I'm not in the CD or something. Man, I want a CD. I got a car. We're going to fix it in a few years for Samuel. It's a 1977 Pacer, AMC Pacer station wagon. It comes factory with an AM, FM, 8-track CD radio. And uh, it don't have a motor transmission in it. But we was out here one day and I put a battery uh -huh. on it. Got yeah. it, turned the key on, picked up the mic, went, break, one nine for radio, check. And somebody come back. Go radio check. Right on. Nice. I can speak jive. I can speak trucker. All right. We're going to. Well, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's. let's uh, Jamie, let's flip this over. No, let's 
to the audience out there, I'm not trying to make the camera so shaky. Sorry about that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, yeah, be all right. Now we need the dome light hole, right? Right. That's cutting out really just a slip parts that we need to not be there. Thing. Right. All right. Tip that in here. All right, all right, all right. You know I've never seen that movie. <laughs> Wow, oh, yeah. One of my best friends bought me an exacto knife here while I had. Amazing. Yeah, the first thing I did with it was surgery on my ingrown toenail. <laughs> it worked. I felt like a doctor. Uh -oh. yeah. Okay. Anyone tells you you need to go to school oh, yeah. for twenty years yeah. to learn how to No, today we're so showing you how to put up. in your old hand liner. Next week we'll show you how to pull a tooth. Right? We need to find somebody complaining with a toothache. I'm sorry. If I had a nickel for every time I had to sew myself up, I wouldn't have any nickels just yet. But I know how to. So it, that's pretty much as, you know. That's as good. That's just as good, you know. Is it really? Step yeah. One, try to pass out. You know, every expert says book knowledge is just as valuable as any experience out there. <laughs> Yeah, like any expert will tell you, book smarts, money smarts, Trump book smarts. Get on the streets and hustle. Yeah, that's why all my favorite surgeons live in alleyways with their tools. Yeah, this really great guy giving lobotomies out from his garage, free. <laughs> A nail gun. Yep. <laughs> they call him Nailgun Henry. <laughs> Nailgun Henry. That's I can't remember why they call him that, though. Dr. Nailgun Henry. Dr. Nailgun Henry. He used to have a medical license. Which this is in a channel all the way yeah. around. So. Yes. Yeah, so Except for this back piece. And it's got a we piece could trim it off with it. Yeah. Well, it's going up in a channel. So. Sometimes if you roll it, you don't have room for your thing. Well, that's what I'm going to say. It might be hard to squeeze in. So should we trim it? Let's just... What I do? Where's that razor button? Just, just start trimming? Well, I would say so if it's dry enough. I would probably not do it that close, Seth. And get a different blade this thing. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just cut it right with it because it's got a quarter inch wide channel that's going up here. I want to know. Now, this is one thing, and, and I, you don't want to make mistakes, but if you do, if we do, we've got more material. And here's the thing about it is, for you DIY wires, do it your yeah DIY. Yeah, do it your. I get that backwards a lot of times, like DIY. Huh. But if you're part of the DWI crowd, <laughs> was a joke. <laughs> but if you're anyway, if you, uh, here's the thing: if you mess something up, that's just an experience for you to learn from, right? Uh, there's a lot of things like headliners, like doing this. I'm overconfident with my ability to do this. Uh, because I've done so many, right? Right. But uh, the thing is, is man, I've made so many mistakes. Anybody? Okay, I'll tell you something, man. I uh, I went to a church one time. Hey, Seth, I was wrong. You can go ahead and cut it real close. Yeah. I went to a church one time, and there was this guy in it. I found out that there were several people in the church that was trying to overthrow the pastor. Oh yeah, man. Somebody. Do I know what church this is? No, you weren't born yet. Okay. There was people there in the church that were trying to overthrow the pastor, and I liked the guy. The pastor was a good friend of mine. Still is to this day. But uh, these people were going behind his back talking about him. Right. And uh, one of the guys asked me, and I don't know why, man, because I had a job and I was busy, but he thought, he's like, here, man, I need some help. You need some money. I need some help. Man, you can help me put cabinets in a house. And he was a cabinet guy. So I get up there and we go to this house over there by a, you know where the boys ranch is over by Lock and Dam number two, the original up, up White River, yeah. uh, by the old Beth Bethesda. We go to this house out there and the dude starts putting up cabinets and I've installed cabinets before ever since I was a kid. My dad, we dad built his own house. I worked in a cabinet shop for a while, so I knew what it's doing. So we're putting cabinets in the house and uh, the dude starts putting up trim. And the whole time, he's like, yeah, old so-and-so, like, you know, old so-and-so. And I could tell this dude's trying to start, like, he's trying to pin, put, pin me against our pastor. And uh, 
So as we're putting trim up, all of a sudden the dude cuts a piece of trim about this much too short. Dude's been doing cabinets for for years, right? Right. For years. And then he puts this, he cuts his piece of trim about six inches too short. And he's like, then he gets a cussing mad. I can't believe I've done that. I've done cabinets my whole life and I've never cut a piece of trim wrong. So I was like, that man's a bald faced liar. <laughs> and I was like, and so anyway, we got out in the truck and he goes, Man, you need he said, what time can what time are you gonna be here tomorrow? And I said, dude, I got a job. I said, I appreciate you trying to help me, but I'm just gonna be honest, you're a liar. <laughs> I said, you're a liar. I don't like you bad mouthing my preacher. I love my pastor. And I said, when you told me you've never cut a piece of trim wrong, mm. that's a lie. That's a lie, man. The first thing people do is make mistakes. Dude, you that's fine. I said, the first thing people do is that's the first mistake people make, you know? Right? And I have cut trim wrong, I said, dude. Everybody, man. I said, everybody. So. And I've only worked on like two houses. That's not true. <laughs> huh. I've worked on a lot of houses, I guess. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I guess my whole point of telling that story was, if you're afraid of making mistakes, man, don't be afraid. Go make, go make mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. Uh, like, like you can see right now, man, we took a, a, a roll of uh, material that was given to us. We took the original headliner out of the van, and 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 look at this. We have a beautiful. Now this is the. If it looks like it's got swirls on it, this is the material. For some reason, it does this. Yeah, I'm not sure why I do that. But, uh, it's like just a velvet. Like a velvet. It's like anyway, this turned out beautiful. We're proud of this. Before we put it in, we're going to go uh, paint. What's right here? I don't know. Right there. Yeah. You're going to need some gunk off this pack of this or something. You'll get me uh, I don't think it's big enough. Grease and wax Maybe it is. I don't know. Things out there. A bit hard to see. Well, like I said, the main thing is just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to do it. And if you make a mistake, like I said, if we if we were in this, we'll just go another and do it. Right. You know. That's right. Yeah. Looks good. Uh oh, oh, that's a trash truck. That's Purdy's. Yep. All right. Well, Paul, yeah. what have you been working on today? What have I been working on today? Uh, I've spent today masking off and uh, scuffing the, rear the yeah the rear doors of this man's van. Right. Yes. Uh, you know, mostly just getting into cracks and crevices that, like, you know, sandpaper wouldn't get into pretty much. And, uh, you know, making sure there weren't any, like, holes in our tape and paper and stuff. I just did this edge because I wanted to see if it was going to affect it. See, this is what we call the trial and error method. If this doesn't work, we'll have to come up with a plan B. But if it works out okay, then we can go with plan A. No. Uh That's what that's doing is letting that cool let go. Oh. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Yeah. We're not going to do this. See, now we've got to come let up with a different dry. plan. Yeah, always let that glue dry. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. All right, well, let's go out and uh, you got that scuff pad? Let's go out. Uh, Don't just wait for man. Coming. Let me grab some real quick. I just need to grab this. I'm not showing you what it is. But trust me, it's vital to the process. All right. You see your camera. See your pretty face. Right. Okay, Paul has been working on these back doors. We're fixing. After I took a, uh, after I got done with all this, obviously we still need the plastic before we paint it, but this should be good. 
we're gonna wax and grease remover it. Yeah. And tack it. No more sanding or masking required for this. This is just Seth has got the headlight doors. Uh, they've been painted. They look good, except they got a little bit of trash. So instead of wet sanding and buffing, we're just gonna uh, he's gonna wet sand. He's wet sanding it smooth, and we're gonna put on another coat of clear. And then, uh, then we're fixing to get in here. Now Jamie, but Jamie put the uh, we had, we did a whole deal about the the fog lights and how they are set the way the 18 van was or the same size lights and stuff. It's era period correct as the 18 was, and now he's got them wired up in here with the wires run over there for the toggle. And uh, so we're fixing to put the headliner back in it. But before we do, we want to trim. This van was originally baby blue, so we're gonna we're gonna trim out this windshield, cover the dash, and uh, get in here with a scuff pad. We're gonna we're fixing the satin black, all of that. Uh, all right. So this is running on 31 minutes. 31 minutes is plenty. Uh, you anything you want to add, Seth? No. Nope. Nothing. All right. All right, well, I better ask Paul. I don't want to leave Paul out. Yep. Paul, you got anything you want to add? Uh, click like, subscribe. Yeah, click like and subscribe. Hey, thank you for the uh, 250 plus subscribers. Yes. We got a subscriber there day. A dude watched the video where he did the fake donuts in the cop car. Nice. And he was like, this is cool. I'm subscribing. I was like, right on. Wait till we do some real donuts. Yes. Right? All right. Well, hey, God bless you people. Love y'all. Y'all have a good day. And that's a 69 Plymouth Roadrunner. Yeah. Arr, 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 arr.